What is going on, everybody? It is a new season of Real Stories of Success. I'm Ryan Herget sitting here with Austin Lahr, and we have got a couple very cool guests today. But before we get started today, I want to encourage everybody to like, comment, subscribe, and just uh, reach out to us if there's anything we can do to help you out with your business. We'd certainly love the opportunity. Austin, what are we working on today, man? I'll tell you what, we just hit a thousand downloads. How That's cool is cool. that? That's yeah, pretty cool. We're, we've been doing this since September of, uh, night, of, 19, of 19 and uh, and just hit a thousand. So we appreciate all of you guys out there listening. And like Ryan said, anything that you guys need from us, you've got our contact information here. Email us with ideas, rate, review, share. Um, appreciate all of you. And for those of you that don't know us, um, you know, we started this podcast about, about four or five months ago now with the sole purpose of really helping spark some encouragement, really ignite that passion that people have, because there's so many awesome stories around our business of real estate and the people within the lending world and the mortgage world, et cetera. And we really want to share those stories, bring those to the light to help spark something within somebody, encourage those people to step out and really live their best life and live that life of success. So today, Austin, let's uh, let's dive into our guest. I'm Absolutely. excited about this one. I it's going to be awesome. I am very excited. Yeah. So why don't, why don't you fire away? So we are starting with Laura Waters and Leighton Wellbaum. These two agents, I've had the opportunity and the pleasure of watching their you know their businesses over the last handful of years and they have just done some really amazing stuff within Indianapolis real estate world and they've really kind of dove into a specific niche as well which I'm super excited to talk about because it's people doing business the way that they want to do business with awesome people and you guys are even starting to do some new investment and you know in investing work and encourage others to look at real estate from an investment purpose so I'm really excited to unbox a lot of that today oh that I uh we agree, yeah. and uh, we're really excited about some of the new stuff that we've got coming here in 2020. And thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. So, so guys, I'm always excited when you have two people, right? It's always one person. Um, so you guys are our first guests of, of a group as a team, right? So tell us about that. How has working as a team, um, we, we both have teams, and we, yeah. tr- we strongly, strongly believe in teamwork. Tell us about that and how your dynamic is, and how has that helped you guys in business? Yeah, I'd say starting off, you know, uh, the way we came together, Laura is an uh, ex-teacher, mm-hmm. um, so she has an educational background. Um, I've been in real estate now for 18 years, so we really were able to come together and um, really kind of just the shared enthusiasm and um, shared values that that we share, and uh, it's it's been exciting. Yeah, it was very natural. You know, we didn't start off saying, oh, or let's start a team or let's be partners. It was, well, me constantly going to Leighton, asking him questions, bouncing ideas off of him and um, him accepting those, (laughs) (laughs) taking my calls. And it just kind of turned into uh, this great, great partnership. You know, we sat with a couple the other day, um, talking to them about some of the things we're excited about. And they asked how long we had known each other. And we told them, you know, a couple years. And they said, you act like you've you know, been together forever. <laughs> and it kind of feels that way. I think that's what's awesome about about neat and dynamic partnerships is, you know, having the opportunity to have, you know, gotten to know you guys a little bit more, you know, a handful of years ago now and seeing the 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 energy and the enthusiasm that Laura brought to the business and the experience and the wisdom that Leighton, you know, has, has carried through having worked in several facets of the business previously. It was just a really kind of this perfect storm of people coming together. And like you said, Laura, it's not always, you know, we didn't start this with the intention of building this, but it's really kind of evolved into that. Mm-hmm. And you guys share a lot of similar passions for, you know, urban real estate and you know, renovation work. So let's dive into that a little bit as far as kind of what you guys are working on, your niche within the marketplace, and how has that really started to build and come together over the last couple of years of working together? Uh, so my background in uh, investment real estate is really how I developed the passion for real estate. Um, I own about seven properties now, eight total units, and renting those. But we've had the opportunity this year to partner with um Rybell Investments, Mm -hmm. and their goal is really to make real estate investing a possibility for the everyday person. Um, So the person who, you know, works a nine to five has no idea how to, uh, you know, come up with a plan. What are they looking for in values? Uh, Which general contractors? Who's going to make all those decisions? Rybell really, um, and us, Waters and Wellbaum, really take that out of the equation and make it a possibility. That's sweet. Yeah, and I think that um, as part of you know my background in education, I enjoy these people who are interested in this. They don't, yeah, they they don't know where to start. Ground zero, they're at, and mm-hmm. it's about educating them and 
developing a partnership long term to you know watch them wealth in real estate i love that i love that so wealth in real estate and and for those of you guys that are watching you know youtube or or wherever their website is up on the uh, on the screen right now so you guys can kind of dive into that what is the website that you guys that you guys want people to go to that is one thing about our business and real estate is that it is uh, multifaceted and well, whether it's um, you know passive streams of income and owning rental properties or trying to uh, take on a rehab project or selling real estate so you know with us partnering with Rybell we're still doing the everyday first time home buyer and one of the exciting things um, is actually being able to take uh, the first time home buyer with Rybell and maybe do a new construction in an urban downtown setting as opposed to, yeah. you know, the uh, outside the belt with all the uh, other builders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gosh, there's so much downtown, right? I mean, just yeah. so much opportunity. And, and I feel like a lot of the millennials, that's that's where they're looking first mm-hmm. as opposed to just a generation ago when everyone was looking in the suburbs. So really, really cool. You know, I was kind of doing some research and uh, someone told me that you guys got ranked number nine um, top real estate teams uh, with your social media. Um, and, and I really wanted to kind of dive into <laughs> marketing strategies right i mean because everyone's their own business owner in this industry right and uh-huh. and uh and so i think a lot of our audience wants to know how are you guys doing that how did how did you get as good as you did and everyone has to start somewhere so take us through the beginning how did you start and and what's that strategy now um i would say we s- i started reluctantly because <laughs> um you know my generation um i'm 45 going on 25 uh-huh. uh, <laughs> and laura was really you know able to um, motivate us and show the enthusiasm and the passion and really, uh, I mean, take it over, Laura. I mean, I think you know. Well, I was going to say a lot of my peers. Okay, ground zero, Ryan here. Um, I think back even when I was starting at High Garden Real Estate, you know, and you were there as the president of sales. Our $50. Oh, yeah, that's right. Free branding for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh, the fifty dollars yeah, that Ryan, Ryan we gave won us. With Ryan for oh my Facebook. gosh! That our, was first like our first Facebook. social media right. thing. I forgot yes. about that. We did contest. a contest. We did contest a challenge. Make sales That's go round. Yeah. Exactly so right. Ryan had a Facebook contest to develop a Facebook ad, put it in play, um, and it would be fifty dollars put towards that ad that you, we could spend. I love it. Um, I forgot about our, that. Yeah. That was our that first was <laughs> video. <That> was. <laughs> Ooh, that was a while ago. Two years? It feels like, oh my goodness. Um, Yeah, I think it's just watching real estate in general. You know, the trend, everything's on social media, whether you have a restaurant, you know, magazine, whatever it is. So you have to, you have to evolve as the job evolves. And so, you know, a lot of our peers, we saw doing them, Robin Brees, who started at High Garden um, as the marketing you know, person, she's been a giant influence to us as to, you know, staying on top of this. I think that sellers expect it too. You I know, agree. Mm-hmm. yesterday we had an investor who, you know, was like, show me, do, do you really do this? I want to know. I know it's on Zillow. I know it's on the BLC, but where, what else are you doing? And so we've had to up our game. Yeah. When you can point them to, hey, look, uh, follow us on Instagram, and then they can search back through and see the amount of marketing and posting. And um, one of the things that we've really tried to do with the social media is also bring good content, you know, as far as, and vary the content as far as what what are, um, you know, the subscribers or the people following you, what do they want to get out of it? And, um, you know, we did a, yeah, we did a great piece on um, sewer lines, you know, the main line for the sewer line. And it was amazing how many people had no idea what that was, why would you do it, um, and and uh, the importance of it, you know, it's a fifteen to $20,000 repair if you don't get that done at, at the time of inspection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt, and I think one of the things that you guys have really done, I mean, think back to what you just said, Laura, two years ago, you did that first video, and that's when I just wanna encourage people because that's only been two years, and you guys have, you know, maybe that was a spark, maybe it was whatever it was, but now you guys are doing videos at a very high level, in my opinion. I'm, I follow you both on social media. You guys Thanks. do an incredibly good job of doing that, and more importantly, doing it consistently, I feel, through, you know, things like Instagram stories, Facebook stories. You know, I, I think you're a thousand percent right, and thinking of the people that we're helping right now with homes, they a hundred percent expect that, because if your goal as a business owner in real estate is to put a sign in the yard, put it on the internet, and pray something magical happens, man, that doesn't go over very well 
scale anymore. Mm -hmm. And when you can show them results, when you can say, I ran these three ads and this many people saw it and they get excited about it and they share it, that's like getting them involved in the process. And it creates a, a degree of transparency, I feel as well, that just makes the, the whole experience better and easier. Would mm -hmm. you agree or? Yeah. Uh I agree 100% with that. And it's amazing when we're doing an open house or having a conversation with a, a new investor or a new buyer that we just met, how many of those people have seen us on social media, yeah. have uh, seen the home on social media, and that's why they're there. Um, it's really, it, you know, it's the new MLS um, as far as what people are browsing at, looking at every day. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So going into this this new year, what what's what's motivating you guys? What, what's there driving you in 2020? Mm -hmm. um, I would say like for us, it's really continuing to grow and expand our business. I mean, uh, we're a young partnership of two years, um, but I feel that, you know, we're, we're just getting started. I mean, we're really doing some exciting new stuff. I'm really excited about um, Rye Bell and that investment uh, niche that we're going to be into, as well as just the real estate market in general in Indianapolis. This city is amazing. It's constantly growing and getting uh, a more desirable place to live. So that's what's motivating me. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, it's been fun to kind of focus, and I said this to Ryan a couple of years ago, more downtown within the loop, you know, when you're for me, when I was starting in the business, I would go everywhere and anywhere, and I, I still will. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, it's fun to get familiar with the areas and, you know, really invest in the communities that we are in all the time. So kind of pinpointing that um, and growing there. That's exciting. That's so exciting. So you you just brought up something, Leighton, though, that I kind of want to like like dive into just a you know couple layers deeper because I think a lot of people maybe maybe get into this business, you know, into the lending world or the real estate world, and think you know I need to join a team, I need to partner up with somebody without maybe having an understanding of exactly what that means mm -hmm. and what those roles could look like. What have you guys learned in those first two years? What are maybe some of the the lessons learned that? It's like, wow, if I could tell somebody and like shake them right now, it's like, don't do this. Don't make this mistake. Tell us about some of those experiences and those learning opportunities. For me, I think that when we, you know, this partnership happened organically um, and it wasn't forced. Um, I've been on a, a teams before where maybe, you know, you need a person. Um, you're trying to find that right fit um, for us. I think some of the stuff that I've learned is really just um, perspective. You know, we're not the same person, um, which is really works great for our team. But, um, you know, we both are very understanding of each other and we communicate well. I think communication is, is a big key. Um, you know, there's uh, nothing that we don't talk about as far as, you know, if you know, we need help with something. We're always willing to help. I know that, um, and, and that's amazing. And I think that's something that I don't know how to put that dynamic together in a team, um, but really to, uh, you know, be supportive of everybody on the team. And, you know, sometimes that's not always, uh, it's in the best interest of the team, but maybe not for you that day. Sure, that makes total sense. Yeah, I think that, you know, we have maybe similar personalities but different strengths you know which um, works really well together and we also too have a, a third um, member on our team Robin Page who's been really great she joined the team just this year so it's you know figuring out that dynamic adding slowly growing a team and we'd like to grow in the future I think um, hopefully you know an assistant which I remember you said in your episode Austin how important that was mm -hmm. for you your growth and so hopefully the future, you know, we can kind of figure that out and um, grow Waters and Wilba. Yeah. So I'm curious. So give us give us specific examples, right? Because everybody, a lot of people out there are either on a team or, or they want to grow a team. Give us a specific, specific examples about the highest point and the lowest point that you guys have had in the last two years as a team. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. I can't even imagine. Like, I, we have... This is my perspective. I don't know that we have any low points. I mean, the frustrations we do have, we're quick to tell each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say probably some of the low points, you know, and, and on Laura's behalf is probably like, you know, managing some of 
you know, me. I am not <laughs> the most organized person. Um, where that is a for the record, he was ten minutes late to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and yeah, and she um, honestly has has really um, taken my strengths and been able to, you know, hey, here are some of his weaknesses. She's made me much better at them. She holds me accountable to them. <laughs> um, and uh, vice versa, you know, I mean, she. Uh, You're my wisdom. That's what yeah. I tell people. I <laughs> would be cool. nowhere without Leighton, you know, like even Ryan, you know, because I called you so much at the beginning of my career, but I like to bounce off every idea scenario off someone. And Leighton is always willing to listen, um, even if I don't necessarily need it. It's just the confidence of hearing, yeah, that sounds good. Or, you know, think about this. He's been in the business significantly longer than I have. You know, he's been a lender. He's done so many parts of this job. He's an investor himself. I mean, I have this wealth of knowledge, you know, so while I, so I'll tolerate the lateness (laughs) and a bit of disorganization because what I get out of it is so worth it. Well, well, now I'm really curious. So tell us about the 18 years. Like, how'd you Uh start? Where'd you come from? And and what was that path? Uh, You know, it's a strange path, really. And the fact that, like I said, I I did go to Butler. Um, I was a sports medicine major. I thought I was going to do physical therapy my whole life. Um, uh, I played baseball at Butler. And when I graduated, I was really looking for, A, um, at the time, my roommate uh, was Ryan Hurlba, and he was a business accounting major at Butler and got into lending um, and started Keystone Mortgage Company. Well, we were roommates, and he started this in, in our house mm-hmm. um, on College Avenue, and I was uh, working at Atlas, Atlas Orthopedics, and I was just doing physical therapy stuff there, looking for um, something to do, uh, and he really kind of pushed me into the mortgage business. Um, and then from there, we bought four houses together, and I developed the real estate bug and never looked back. Very cool. So, but you know, it's been a wild ride over 18 years of real <laughs> estate. So you see the ups and downs, and you know, uh, my parents, you know, always ask me if I'm going to do something with my degree. So, <laughs> you know, they we should s- be over that by now. <laughs> we see a lot of that common theme on Truly. on the podcast is mm-hmm. that sports background that that uh, just you know when you're when you're competing at that high level, and then it really translates well into real estate. It just does so. No, I would totally agree with that. What uh, What are your thoughts? I, I mean, taking a lot of that experience right there and kind of using it to not necessarily predict what's going to happen moving forward, but what are your thoughts on what we're looking at with the real estate market? Because there's so much disruption, it feels like right now. There's so much going on, at least here in you know central Indianapolis area. You know, There's so much activity. Market's incredibly good. Interest rates are as low as they've been in 50 years. Inflation's low as it's been in 50 years. I mean, all signs still point to good, right? Mm-hmm. So what do you guys see with the Zillow coming in and, you know, the you know, the uh, new Zillow instant offer that, you know, they just released here in the Indianapolis area? I mean, there's so many of these disruptions going on and kind of changing the way I think real estate gets done. What are you guys seeing? How do you handle that as we move forward in the year? Uh, well, th- it's exciting. And I think uh, this comes into Laura with the educational background. I have a, a love of learning and real estate. So trying to stay up on those um, topics and be ahead of them Mm -hmm. on the curve. I do think we're a part of High Garden Real Estate, um, which is a great real estate company, cutting edge. They're actually looking at an iBuyer program as well Mm -hmm. um, that we are rolling out to kind of compete with uh, the disruptors in the market and actually have a uh, local uh, real estate company that can provide that. So those are exciting things. One thing I love about Indianapolis is that we're kind of slow and steady. You know, it's uh, there's not these huge booms um, or these huge crashes. So I feel very confident in the Indianapolis market moving forward. Um, It's it'll be an exciting year. It's it's I uh, I think, you know, all signs point to at some point we're going to reach the top of the mountain. Um, But, you know, how high is this? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, and I think just I've probably been listening to you and, you know, no reason to be concerned if you're still doing the right things. You know, you're still developing those relationships. You're, you know, still grinding, making the calls. So staying up, you know, on top of it, 
is all you can do. I think that's so so key what you just said right there, Laura, because I, w- I was having a conversation with an agent who her she had her best year in real estate up to that point in 2009 when the market just took a, a dive. And she found opportunity where nobody else wanted to go work. Mm-hmm. And it was helping, you know, a lot of people that had challenges buying houses because of the circumstances, losing their jobs, jobs, et cetera. But now she sold 58 homes this past year alone from people that she helped between 2009 and 10 buy a house. And guess what? They're all in incredibly better equity Mm -hmm. positions now and just continuing to do those little things and stay in front of those people and continuously, as you know, again, you said earlier, always be finding ways to provide value. So finding new ways to always do real estate. It's uh, I'm, I'm personally as excited as I've ever been going into a year because I think of exactly what you said. There's so much opportunity out there. It's just deciding where do I want to go get it from and how do I make that happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is, uh, that's the thing I love about real estate is it's never the same, you know, um, whether it's helping the first time home buyer or the out of state investor or, um, you know, helping someone buy and sell. It's just every transaction has its own uh, unique set of circumstances. They're all puzzles, right? You just got to figure out how to put it together. Just got to figure out how to put it together. So, so talk to us about success, guys. I mean, mm-hmm. you you've seen some success already. What what's that mean to you in in twenty twenty? What maybe even farther than that? What's success defined for you guys? Well, we talked about how deep of a question that was. <laughs> yeah, that is. Uh, you know, I hope this isn't my "this is us" moment where I start crying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> talking about success. your babies. <laughs> <laughs> talking about my daughters and stuff like that. But really, from a business standpoint. Um, you know, we are in the entry level of Rybell Investments and growing that. Uh, we're in, you know, only our second year of Waters and Wellbaum, and um, I really think that, you know, the sky's the limit for us. So I'm really excited about um, where that's going to take us. I think success for us this year would be adding um, to our team, um, helping uh, some young agents uh, be more successful um, and help us be more successful. Uh, for me also, my family, you know, um, part of being successful in real estate and the reason I love this job is um, I can work uh, really hard and make the income that I need to to be able to spend the time that I want with, you know, my daughters, Casey, uh, Ava and Sophie, and also uh, with my wife, Michelle, and do, you know, not miss those events and, you know, do the family vacations. And, you know, to me, that's what success looks like. Three girls. Three daughters. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so babies. next year, actually, all three will be in high school. <laughs> oh, man. It's frightening. Oh, man. So we're, so we're, we're going to have to have you back on next year at this time. <laughs> <I'm just gonna laughs> I might be more gray. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting, though. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah I would say, um, gr- you know, growing as a leader, um, the team, you know, being able, I enjoy, while well, this is my job and I really love it, I also enjoy traveling. Um, and so to be able to do that, Thankfully, I've had some great teammates, Robin and Leighton, for when I do go to Australia or (laughs) wherever it is. But to be able to know that back home, I'm not dumping this all on just Leighton or Robin and that we have some supporters on the team. So success, you know, growing as a leader, developing that team and and maybe being able to do a little bit more of that traveling that I love. Heck yeah. Where's the best place you've gone? Oh, my gosh, it's hard. Well, I went to Santorini, Greece this past summer and that was beautiful that sounds amazing gorgeous yeah that sounds all right yeah and I think you know it's and when you go into our team dynamic and it's really um, over the past two years it's been a long time um, since I really felt like you know when you have a partner that you know you leave you know I was in Yellowstone and uh, last summer where you know cell phones are not an option right yeah (laughs) you know it's literally like hey for the next three days consider you know she's in Greece you know with her phone <laughs> on the bottom of the Mediterranean Oh my gosh sea. my husband dropped my phone oh, no, no <laughs> lifeline yeah. you can imagine that's I a helpless on, feeling yes well but, and of course he only had Leighton's number so I had to be like Leighton help me out <laughs> yeah but it's uh it's actually been uh just gratifying to have someone that you can trust you know what I mean like if I send Laura to I always know that she's going to take care of my clients and treat them as if they're her own Um, and they are our clients but um, both of us really kind of pass that ball back and forth and and really uh, work that dynamic which is um, it's hard to do that and you know um, and not say you know what's what's in it for me you know all the time but you know we've really uh, 
had that dynamic and true partnership yeah it's yeah. respect yeah you deserve this you know i value mm. you enough i i want you to keep working with me so yeah you yeah. and she's like i'm gonna be gone next month so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i that's true i'm going to south america so. oh that's fantastic good for you guys good for you guys well this has been a ton of fun thank you both so much so how does somebody connect with you if somebody's wanting to get into real estate inv investing somebody's looking to you know just get involved in you know urban indianapolis real estate how do they connect with you guys Mm -hmm. Any way they want. Instagram. <laughs> yeah, so I think email. Instagram, email, cell phone. Uh, Laura, give out the uh, Laura Waters real estate website. Laura List Indy. There you Laura go. List Indy. There Laura List Indy. Indy. Mm -hmm. There it is. And we'll, we'll have that up in the screen and in the show notes for everybody as well. But uh, we really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of really your day. Really appreciate you guys. Thanks, guys. Sit down with us. So, so that is it for this edition of Real Stories of Success. If you took something away from this, and again, I certainly hope that you did because it was awesome and epic. So thank you both so much for coming in, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Thank you. See you guys.